Hello, hello, good morning and good evening. Welcome back to another edition of Tech Talk Live. Today, I'm super excited to be able to share my sweet friend that I've gotten to know over the last couple of years via um, online networking, like what we do on our nail groups. But I've also gotten to meet Gail in person a couple of times. And I can tell you, Gail Harris is our special guest and I'm so delighted to share her story with you guys. Oh, good morning. That was so sweet, Amy, thank you. <laughs> And so um, if you guys don't know, just to um, give it a little extra push on our Tech Tech um, Worldwide group, we need to expand our um, admin team as we were growing. And just recently, Gail is one um, that has joined our admin team. And if you guys haven't noticed in the last couple of weeks, for the very first time, she has built up this courage and we've had to encourage <laughs> her to do it to go live showing nail art because she feels that she's in the beginning stages and wanted to try to do these basics for beginners. But I can tell you, Gail, I'm watching your lives and I'm looking at them going, those are not basic. She does not realize and have the confidence yet to know that what you're doing is some advanced techniques as well. And so I love what you're doing um, of oh, self-empowerment. And as I told you, don't you get a high off of it after you go live? Like. I don't know the comments and that you did it and accomplished that goal. Don't you feel you, a little? You, you really do. You really do. You so do. thank you for that little extra push for me to do yeah. that. Um, speaking in front of people has never been an issue with me, but actually showing people how to do things uh, is a little bit, you know, such close detail is a little bit out of my area of expertise. So um, my background, I, I was a martial arts instructor for 25 years. So oh. I'm used to teaching people how to punch, kick and defend themselves. But <laughs> teaching pretty little nail artwork and fine, intricate little skills. Um, let me know that my fine motor skills need a little bit of work. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I love it. So that's a whole element of beauty I, I did not know. So this is <laughs> one of my Favorite parts about Tech Talk Live is being able to go back in in time and kind of find out what got you into, you know, what paths did you take to get into your career to get into the beauty industry? And so you're going to have to go back to martial arts now because now I am interested about that. So what inspired you and what were the steps in your life that kind of made you get into the industry? OK, well, the mindset is is very, very similar. Excuse me. Um, I started with the martial arts. Oh, gosh. I mean, this was at least 30 some odd years ago. Uh, my son was in martial arts and he had been in it for probably about a year. And his instructor uh, kept bugging me about doing a joining a woman's self-defense class. And I finally relented and said, OK, join the class and fell in love with it from day one. I'm the youngest of all brothers. So learning how to have a sense of empowerment and being physically confident in myself was something that I didn't realize that I needed. Basics until from I the saw what, what you could do with it. And um, I was hooked from, from night one. And I was told very, very early on that one out of 10,000 students will achieve the rank of um, Shodan, which is first degree black belt in the style of, of mm -hmm. karate that I was in. And I said that night when I read that, that will be me. And four and a half years later, it was. And yeah. um, I, <clears throat> I don't usually tell people this, but at one point in time, I was ranked number one in the country in forms, weapons and fighting in the style oh of karate that I took. Um, and I owned a dojo and, you know, taught little kids all the way up through adults. Uh, so, yeah. So confidence was something that, um, you know, it was kind of just trained into you. If you don't have that confidence in how you carry yourself, you'll be a target for something. So, yes. And we talk about confidence a lot that it takes the training Mm -hmm. to get to your specialty and the drive. So you have to have that. But confidence actually comes from, I mean, we like to think it comes from within. We have the drive and we have the dignity for it, but the confidence comes actually from the other people. 
the the confidence mm -hmm. comes from the feedback that you get of if you got you know bad feedback then obviously your inner drive is going to go okay i need to adjust this and change this and fine tune this mm -hmm. but when you have it and everybody's like oh my gosh look at this look at this your confidence builds up from that oh yeah and so well, yeah there, there's nothing like getting kicked in the head to go you know i gotta do something that, that make sure that that doesn't happen again <laughs> Well, that did happen more than once. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I grew up taking Taekwondo. My brother and oh, I did okay. it for many years. I want to say, I, I don't remember my belt lineup, but I was just under brown and I wanted to be black so bad. And I loved our sensei. I remember his name, even Sensei Doug and all of that. But um, we never, for some reason, I don't know what happened in life, but my brother and I didn't continue on with it. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, the structure is like military structure. You yes. have to show up and be in stance and call them by the respectful names and they'll respect you back in return. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kind of talk about this in the salon industry. It's the same way. If a, if a client shows up and we don't show them respect, they're not going to continue to train to work with us. Oh, of course. Or, yeah, oh. or with that, they might stay here, but they're not going to give us a level of respect that we really want because we're not giving it. And boy, when you get into martial arts or military or anything like that, the respect is demanded. And, and it I is, love that. It, I love the different. structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, it was very interesting at the time that uh, and I know we're supposed to talk about nails, but since you brought it up with the martial arts and talk about it, um, there was a time where I was, uh, I had gotten out of the beauty industry. We'll get back to that later and went into the medical field and the hospital that I worked at had a newspaper and they would have a section in it called after hours. And this after hours gentleman who wrote it came to me and said, I heard you were a black belt. Is that true? I'd like to interview you for this, this, uh, our, you know, hospital paper. So he did. Well, let me tell you the reaction that I got from women, was amazing good for you it's good to see women in power the men sadly were very they were either very intimidating um intimidated by what my accomplishments were okay. or made a joke out of it um yeah. and i actually had uh an orderly come up to me and grab a part of me that he shouldn't have and well, sadly, uh, needless to say, that won't, that would never happen again. Um, <laughs> I love so, it. So the, the difference between how men felt about it and how women felt about it was drastically different. Yeah. Which you know, I, I, I you wonder, do men feel a little intimidated if they're in this industry, the nail industry, because it's it's such a female dominated. Um, you yeah, know, industry in and of itself. Yeah. Interesting. You know, it's always interesting because the men that I've interviewed, it was almost like the industry came easier to them than it did to us. Because women like being pampered by men. So men, this hairdressers, and they don't follow traditional format. Like, for instance, the men will, I mean, seriously, I've watched this so many times where the men, if you go to shows or whether I've been into their salons and they throw up the hair and, and cut and do all the unique things as women are very precise and we bring it up and we follow the direction, they tend to create their own niche in it. And, and that's how they get, you know, higher up into the ranks as being recognized by their uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the men that I've org uh, that I have interviewed have actually said that the industry became very easy to them because they were the different and because they were the ones that women wanted to go get pampered by them for some reason. Yeah. Men don't want to get beat up by women. So yeah, it's no, very probably. different in the martial arts. <laughs> I had to work twice as hard, twice as long um, to get the same amount of respect uh, because it was just women at the time that I was getting into the martial arts. Yeah. Um, it was just a, a passing thing. They won't last in it, but you know, when uh, Taekwondo was entered into the Olympics as a sport, then women had had their place and a platform in which to show what they could do. And it's just gone, you know, steadily up since then. Yeah. I for, unfortunately don't do it any longer for, um, physical uh, restraints but i i loved it i, I had a blast owning yeah. a school and teaching and it was a lot of fun 
Well, that set you up for the foundation of where you are today, that sometimes you have to be tough, maybe not hands-on tough, <laughs> but the structure that you learned from all of that. And so after martial arts and after doing that for all those years, what was the next steps in your career path? Well, um, mine, I had a big burp in the middle. So I, I went to cosmetology school when I was in high school. Uh, the high school that I went to had a program that your junior and senior year, uh, you would spend the majority of the day in the trade school learning cosmetology, and then you would take a couple of your regular classes at the high school. So when you actually graduated from high school, you graduated with your high school diploma and also enough hours to um, take your state boards and become a licensed hairdresser. Um, which I did. And I worked in the industry for about 10 years. And to be honest, I got out of it for a couple different reasons. I have really sensitive skin and the chemicals and such really bothered me and I could not mm -hmm. wear um, gloves. It made it worse. And I really didn't like working with women. The women that I worked with were very, it's a cutthroat, the beauty There's... industry is a cutthroat business, you know, and mm -hmm. sadly I just couldn't deal with the negativity. So I got out of it, went into the uh, medical field uh, and was there for double digit uh, years. And um, fast forward, my life took me up to Maine with my husband's job and I worked from home. I telecommuted, I kept the same job that I had um, back in my hometown, um, but I worked from home up there. And it was very isolating. I didn't have the means to make friends so I, I was getting my nails done up there and um, got talked into maybe going back to school for it, not realizing that my cosmetology um, license covered me for nails. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. And it would. Yeah. So I uh, inquired about my license. They said I, it had lapsed. I needed to take my state boards again. So after 30 some odd years, I had to go take my state boards. Now, mind you, in 1977, it did not, your state boards did not include what it includes today. The worst thing that you could catch in 77 were lice. Oh so there was goodness. no bloodborne pathogen. There was no aseptic technique. You know, make sure you put the little strip around your nape when you put the cape on. That was it. It was basically just how to do finger waves and, and pin curls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So... Fortunately, I was able to find somebody to kind of um, mentor me a little bit to take the state boards again. I did. And that was in uh, 2014. So I have now been doing nails since 2014. Um, we ended up moving back to my hometown. I found a house that had a suitable area for in-home salon. And in 2018, I opened the Agape Nail Studio. And I've been here ever since. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. So the other day we were live and we were live. Your little grandson came on <laughs> and, and it, we were talking about the name of your salon. And he was like, what's a guppy, a guppy, you know, like him trying to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And um, prior to then, because in our group, you have shared what it stands for, but will you share what um, agape stands for? Yeah. Agape is a biblical, it, it's actually um, Latin for God's love. Yeah. Um, or Greek for God's love, excuse me. Oh my gosh, it's Greek for God's love. Uh, so when I decided to um, open up a, a studio, I was going to get dedicated to him. I'm a very spiritual person and everything that I do uh, reflects my love for him. So I figured agape would be perfect for that. And many of the times that my clients come in, um, we pray before we start. You know, is there anything yeah. on your mind today? Is there anything that that's troubling you that we can pray about? And you know what? People are very eager for that. They want to get things off mm -hmm. their chest. They want to know that somebody else cares about them, what's going yeah. on in their life. And we pray. And and then I sit back and I just listen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've talked about this before. Like I have a sign that sits right up here and it says what people need is a good listening to. And for that is a reminder that they don't always need my opinion. They just need right. me to listen. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they'll say, well, what is your take on that? Or what is your opinion? I'm like, do you really want it? Because I turn everything around. 
I try to become the person that they're talking to, not relate with them, but relate to the person they're talking to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how does that come across? And then I turn it around and try to relate it from their side of it and see both sides of the story. And I think that's one of the things that's made me successful as a nail tech and people trusting in me is because I don't just side up with the person. Sometimes I do see the opposite. And if they want my opinion, it might oppose what they're thinking. Mm-hmm. But the, the trust and the level of sitting there. But I love the idea that your entire salon and the in and where you are in your life stems from where you've grown in your faith, where you've grown in structure, where you've grown in knowledge and all the way through. And to have a reflection of a name that you do and to work underneath that reflection only sets you up for success for anything that you do. So I love that you've brought your personal and your faith and, you know, your boundaries of everything you want to do all together into one. Mm-hmm. And you and you live that. That's huge. A lot of people don't realize that who they are at work is different than who they are at home. What their beliefs are at work is different than what their beliefs are at home. And so sometimes when I do one to one coaching and I'll, I'll be like, OK, your business name and and I, this isn't the person that I was coaching, but it's the first one that comes up actually is a biblical. Their name is actually a biblical um, proverb. And uh, anyway, so where are you with that? Your Mm -hmm. business name is this, but every time you you share with me, you know, something in your career or the way your mindset is and and the way the competition is and the way all this is doesn't line up with what your business is. Mm -hmm. And so where are you? You need to self-discovery. And so sometimes it's that tough love when I'm coaching with people of like, you need to bring all this together. You named a business this. You are a reflection of that. Where are you in that? And where are you in your business? Are you owning it? Are you giving the faith to it that, you know, is tied into the name? For instance, my name, you guys know my story, Perfect 10 became my story. I didn't come up with Perfect 10. It was written on old blackboard in a salon that I didn't have a name for yet. And it came down to like Amy's Nail Salon and Perfect 10. Well, I didn't want it as Amy's because I knew my vision was going to bring in other texts. And I didn't want them having to answer the phone, Amy's. I wanted them to have ownership as well. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyways, it became Perfect 10 Nail Salon. And then later on, I'm a nail studio instead. And my entire career, I've had to live up to doing my best work because of the name Perfect I wanted to so many times put a fine print underneath, like read the fine print. Nails may be (laughs) almost perfect. There may be a flaw. Not all 10 will be perfect, but maybe one. Because I've had to own up to the name Perfect 10 for 27 years because I never wanted to change the name because it became established very quickly. And the name has been very good to me. And um, so sometimes what we name our salon is a huge thing. And at the time, I didn't realize that. And truthfully, going back, I probably would have changed it at some time to something else. I don't know what else. But just because I was always judged on the idea that it's a perfect 10. And then when I was in public and people would see our shirts, our hats, our booths of what we were doing and they see perfect 10, they're like, oh, well, you think you're a perfect 10, like me personally. And I'm like, no, I do nails. I mean, in 10 like canvases and making the match from one to the other, like trying to perfect it. And uh, anyways, living up to the name of your studio is very important. So what you name is very important. And you are a perfect example that you are living up to the name. Your studio I, reflects I, who you I are. I strive to every day, and if if people see me that way, then then I, I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. I oh. I loved when your grandson brought it up, and he was like, "What's this? What's that?" And I and um I thought I'm you know surprised he's not people. down here because I told him I I needed to do a video, and he's like, "Can I be in it too?" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or he might do a guest appearance. <laughs> you never well if he does then then i'm gonna have to talk to his dad <laughs> oh <laughs> well to quickly catch up on the comments i'm not sure if you um we didn't talk about it before yeah um so caitlin is on here which uh, you and caitlin leg so caitlin's also one of our new admin members have gotten to meet a few times in person and and you i love that it's like the chicks club yeah she's she's our baby chick there's um season tens and the baby chick 
So I love it. Caitlin's our baby yeah. chick. Well, Caitlin is on here saying Gail is a bad and a capital A with exclamation points, meaning, yeah. So anyways, I love that. And because you are setting an example for all the um, the newbies, but also not the newbies. What you're doing, um, being in the industry for five years and the steps that you're taking to push yourself to the black belt kind of level, you know, yeah. um, it's phenomenal. And it's taken time and it's taken practice. And most of all, it's taken you building up the confidence and believing in yourself mm. to get there. But it takes that tribe to do it. Like how many times oh. have you reached out saying, do you think that I'm good enough for this? Do you think that I should do this? Because I know for me and you, we've had this a lot. And it's like, absolutely you are. Mm -hmm. You just got to go for it. And you just got to try it. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I would not tell you to go for it if I didn't feel that you wouldn't. And so I love where you're, you've gone with that. And so once you started doing nails and now you've moved and you're independent, was it difficult for you to build a clientele based out of your home versus what you had done before? Or did you find it more easy? Oh gosh, no, it's, it's been very difficult. Um, I worked in a salon in Maine. So um, I stepped into an established clientele there um, to some extent, because the person that was mentoring me actually left to go on her own. Um, and I literally, I was a fledgling. I felt like that my mama bird left and here I am all alone in the nest with no one to feed me. Um, and thankfully we ended up moving back. So I never established myself in a salon here in Massachusetts. I said, you know what, I'm just going to open up, um, a room and and see what happens and because my only education was what i received 30 odd, odd years ago um i i had to do whatever i could to get education um and sadly a lot of it was youtube initially it it, it was youtube i would literally fall asleep with Kirsty Meekin and Susie Moskal on my chest because I was watching their videos all night long. And I said, this is the only way I can do it because there's not a lot of education around here. And, um, and then I found Tech Talk Worldwide. Well, it was something else then and then turned into Tech Talk or however mm -hmm. that goes. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Becky who had put up a post about people who wanted to be mentors or people looking for mentors. And everybody started putting in where they were from and what they would do. And I found uh, Andrea Malave Doyle down in Connecticut. And she was mm -hmm. a, she's a CND educator. And um, that was the only product that I knew about was the hard gel that they carry. So I called her up and, and we made um, a date for me to go down there. I watched her all day in her salon. She gave me a bunch of great stuff to take home. And, um, and then I decided to get myself certified with that. So it became uh, a shellac pro and then a master sculptor. Um, and I can't do acrylics. So that's pretty much where that stopped because I'm allergic to whatever is in acrylics. But I know now um, because of uh, light elegance, but <laughs> um, yeah. And then I found Anita. She was close by, Anita Hug Jones. She's uh, out in New York, and that was only about an hour and a half away. So I got in my car and went and spent the day with her and got certified in the Cuccio gel. And um, then I've met some other people in New England that I have become fast friends with, and we do play dates. So that's where I've gotten my education. And then the cruise came up last year, Cruise with the Stars. And uh, I did that. And then um, the nail camp down in Atlanta in May, I went to that. So I'm doing whatever I can to uh, learn as much as I can about the industry that for me, I feel I got a very late start in life. Um, yeah. But it, it certainly has proven extremely beneficial uh, to have the group that I'm now part of the administration for which still yeah. blows my mind. Um, <laughs> so helpful. And I know other people, you know, other gals that I've talked to feel the same way that this is a great platform. Everybody is very, very friendly, very kind. Um, I don't mind being in this industry, working with people like this that are in the group 
because it's all about empowering each other and lifting each other up. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference in just how you feel about your craft. Mm -hmm. And obviously a big difference from when you very first got in the industry and you're like, I can't work with the women. I can't, yeah. I can't do this. And so to have the mindset and the confidence change, technology has changed. Um, and I agree. I, I believe because of social media and this goes back to, oh my gosh, when we were part of the, it was on AOL, Debbie. Oh, I can't think of the name right now. I know you guys will probably know what I'm talking about. Beauty tech forum. Um, when, when that first came out and being to get into these chat rooms, which is dating me once more, that was when I very first felt the empowerment of women coming together and helping educate each other to, to not see each other as competition, but to say, you know what, we're going to rise up and we're not just going to be the nail tech that was in the back of the room corner while everybody else got to shine and make the money and that we got to take them and do the client while they were getting their hair under the dryer. Like we were the backup filler. Okay. And so to have that empowerment saying, you know what, you need to own this. This is a job. This is not a hobby. You have invested right. in yourself and the time and to take that serious and get the mentorship and, and get that. And, and for me, because like you, I live in Wyoming. We didn't have that. We were paying big bucks to pull educators here, mm -hmm. which they don't, they don't do that anymore because it's too expensive for them to fly in. And I understand because now that I'm a, a, an educator that's flying around, I can't always afford to do that as well. And so I have to limit like, where am I going to go this month? Because pretty much every month I'm going somewhere, but it has to at some point make a profit to cover my expenses. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it very difficult. So I understand it now, but at the time I thought I buy into your business. I buy all of your products. What do you mean you can't afford to send somebody here? Well, obviously there's a lot more to that. And oh, so, yes. yeah. And so, um, you know, one thing that you had mentioned, though, is finding the right mentors and then being able to go to them. And I've opened my studio and my salon up for years for other people to come in. And I did get flack from the nail techs that worked in my salon. But I thought, you know what, you started here fresh out of school and I trained you and, you know, brought you in on my team. So why can't I do the same thing to this person that comes from another state or whatever? And it was it was very difficult. It was a struggle when I decided I wanted to get into the education side, because sometimes people either look at you as competition or they look at you as a mentor. Right. And I've never been the competition side. I'm competitive within myself that I want to be better. I have an inner dignity that yells at me saying, <laughs> I know you can do better than this. I know that you have value. I know that you can do this. You need to make time directly and specifically for that. And whether it's going to another salon for a day and paying to, you know, take that travel and go there, getting it, it takes you cutting time out of your life and saying, this is my focus right now. And I need this for me to go to the next step. And right. and we talk about that a lot. You Whether you have to schedule that now and save for that now to be able to hit a camp or uh, a one-to-one -one mentorship, or there's lots of things you can do online now where you can get mentors online, but it's there. We're here. We want to do this. And I know that's what you're working up to as well as, you know, being able to be a go-to mentor as well. And you're already doing that. You've already created those steps, but um, it takes it takes a big inner drive for us to put ourselves out there. And once we do, the doors open like all around us. And then you're just like, what do I do now? Then the fear comes in and fear is the next level that holds us back because then we're like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not ready for that yet. The doors are open, but we're like, I don't even know what door and, and go for it. I always, I always tell people, I, I what changed my career is um, I'd been in the nail industry for many years. I was ready for a change, but we did a move. And, and that was about three years ago. And at that time, I had learned that I needed to quit saying, no, I don't know. I don't know. And I just needed to immediately say yes. Mm -hmm. You can always go back and go, you know what? I know that I said yes, but the timing is not right. Can we move it to this? And you can finagle that. Mm -hmm. But the moment that I he had around and I said, no, I immediately broke the opportunity and the door was shut. But if I said yes, and then negotiated out the things that could happen, maybe the timing or maybe cost of something or start planning for whatever, those doors never shut. 
they've mm -hmm. always stayed open and then it allowed me to grow even more so you had to become a, a yes person and it's funny because around that time jim carrey came out with a movie that he couldn't say no i think he had a spell on him where he couldn't say no he could only say yes and then he had to follow through with whatever he did i felt like that in my career at that time i thought i said yes i will do whatever i say i'm committed to and boy, did it put me out of my comfort zone because I said yes. <laughs> but I believe that that's what it takes. And obviously, right. in the last the, your you know, coming back into the beauty industry, you've looked at it in a different mindset where I know that you've become this yes person. Yes, I want to do this. Yes, I want to be oh. a mentor. Yes, I want to do this, but how? And then you've reached out and found the mentors that taught you the how. And now look where you are. I well, love you know it. Amy, you know, a lot of t times, too, I, th I think people don't um, realize that they can be their own worst enemy. Mm. Um, I am a much yeah. more mature person today than I was when I was a hairdresser. So who's to say I could have been part of the problem? I could have been mm -hmm. one of those techs that just got really angry at, at the other or, uh, one of those hairdressers that got really mad at the other hairdressers and didn't have the patience and didn't want to put up with the drama. I could have been that drama. I, I don't know. I mean, all these years later, I've learned a little bit of tact, you know, in the, in the 60 years that I've been on this earth, I've learned a little tact. I've learned a little patience. I've learned um, to have a little bit of wisdom as to when to speak, when to listen. Um, so I'm a completely different person now than I was, you know, um, 40 years ago when I just got into the industry. So yeah. um, at least I'd like to think I am. Yeah. So just recently, a whole bunch of doors have opened for you. And it's because yes. you put yourself out there and you've reached out for mentorship and that you've gotten this knowledge. And at some point in time, you must have had this yes mindset to say, I'm, I think I'm ready to, to try something new. And of course, us girls reached out to you and was like, would you be willing to come join our Tech Talk team? I begged to be the person to call you because I had met you. We have you know networked many times and I was like, please, please, please let me be the one to call. And they were like, okay. And um, I remember that conversation. It wasn't too long ago. Your emotions were so amazing and and i i want to put it on a spiritual level because you could not believe that we would choose you out of so many other options but i hope that you see now that you've been on board of why we chose you and it was because you were willing to say yes and that you've been positive the way you've encouraged other people in the comments and in the post and the way we've watched you grow you're exactly fits into what the whole meaning of tech talk worldwide means don't no 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 <laughs> so with that i'm so thankful that you said yes and you've gone with it and now you're like where's my niche what do i want to do and you've thrown out some ideas i love the ideas that you have and these mean that these are ideas that have been deep down into the back of your mind for a while you just didn't know how to get their web platform but but it, they came easily because you're like actually i've kind of been wanting to do this and now you have a platform to do that you had the platform before you could have done it on your own but for some reason being a part of a tribe or being a part of a group allows you to feel more confident to say somebody has my back in this somebody's going to help me out with this and so what was the feeling of of going to the next step where you finally were like yes and you said that it was actually something that was on your list. You've been wanting to do it, but you never had reached out. And then here we approach you. And so I want to talk a little bit about emotions of when we allow those doors to open and things start coming our way of how to how do we balance all of that? Because it, that was a big life career change for you because it's something that you would actually wanted for a long time, but you were you weren't pursuing it. So let's let's do get a let's dig a little bit deep here. Ugh, wait a minute, let me get some tissue. 
Well, no, here's what we're doing today, Gail, is um, I know that it might bring out some emotions, but we're celebrating this because the celebration that comes out of this is with you. You know that Becky and I, I mean, we've done Inspire Your Desire. We've done the Jump Start. We've done the Refresh and the Vivify. All of this is based on our emotional, mental side of overcoming mm -hmm. our little struggles and getting to where we want to be as the a specialist and the expert in our field. And then the one-to-one -one kind of mentorship. With that mindset, we have really taught people, instead of staying in your mind, get into ours and celebrate every single step and not go, well, that didn't work or that door shut, but five others opened. So the crying is actually going to come through, not because of the trial and tribulation where you are. It's the celebration that you're doing this and that you're living this dream that has actually been underlying for a while. So I hope that you see this as what we're bringing out is a celebration of you. And I want to celebrate you. So. Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, was there a question in all of that? Yes. What? I want to know what, okay, so there underlying there was things that you wanted to do, but for some reason you didn't do it on your own. For some reason though, being in a part of the admin group and being part of a bigger group, for some reason is giving you a different sense of yeah. confidence where you're like, okay, I can go. What what changed? What transpired to where you're like, I can do this now? Okay, I I, I think I shared a little bit with you when we were on the cruise. Um, you know, and I, I hate to even think that that's what was holding me back, but I know that it was, you know, what could I possibly do as a 60 year old grandmother? What can I possibly add to the industry that isn't already there or that someone much younger isn't already doing? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that kept me back. I, I kept reeling in my head. Gosh, if it was if it was ten years ago, I would feel so much more confident. Um, hold on, I have this awful thing. My I don't make spit, so I'm always drinking. So, <laughs> no, you're inspiring me to feel like I need to drink more water. <laughs> oh, girl, cases, cases. I drink of this stuff a week. Um. Uh, so where was I about the age? Um. Yeah, I just I figured it at sixty that there wouldn't be anything I could add, nor would anybody want me to add anything to an industry that is, as, well, as I'm finding out now, has people of all ages and all backgrounds. So that was a little bit more, um, it kind of boosted my morale a little bit. But the day that you called me, um, I just, I couldn't believe that out of a group that has over 6,000 people that you, that I would even be on anybody's radar blew me away. Um, and you must have seen something in me that said, yep, I think she could add this to our admin group. I think she could possibly you know go in this direction or whatever it was I, I, you know mm -hmm. whatever the motivation was behind you that helped me as someone who's you know I was ready to retire and just you know not do anything other than babysit my grandkids and here I am reinventing myself at this age which is just kind of really mind-blowing you yeah. know and I have the energy and the drive as if I were 20. Yeah. And, and yeah, so it was that phone call and mm -hmm. just some other things that you, Amy have done behind the scenes for me is that you may not know and you, you may never know um, has certainly give me, given me a shot in the arm of having a little bit more self-worth and less self-doubt, which yeah. is so out of character for me. Yeah. You know, having been in the martial arts for as long as I have had been and, and teaching men and women and dealing with, you know, archaic mindsets, um, I was never self-doubting. And then I, I 
I was there. I was in that place that I never thought I would be. And, and you kind of, you know, gave me your hand and said, come on, I'll help you. And I reached out and, and uh, here we are. But that's the whole thing as you reached out. And I, and I have to remind people, there are so many of us mentors and, and so many times I've gone live and the other person on the other side of the screen is like, contact me. I would love to, I'll answer your questions. And the people just, they, they feel like, oh, that person's too busy. I don't want to reach out. But do you guys know I respond to every single one of you? Yes, every you person. And I, in detail, what I like to do, though, is video chat with you or do the voice clips because mm -hmm. texting and me and my vision. Yeah. So, you know that I send voice clips. Yes. And then they're like, oh, my gosh, like she's willing to do that. And I get that all the time. I can't believe you're taking time out of your day. And I'm like, I can't believe that you're taking time out of your day. Sometimes we put people up on this pedestal. Yeah. We're definitely. on the same pedestal. We're on the same level. Some of us have just more expertise in some areas and blah, blah, blah. But but we want to share and we want to be those mentors. And um, there was a time where, um, you know, when we had decided we want to expand our group and Gail, I mean, you know this, you were the very first one that all of us threw out your name. And it was because you were willing to take the time to be the mentor. The comments that you would leave weren't just like beautiful, stunning, like what I do sometimes because I get so busy and I want to comment on so many of them that I tend to like, you know, just throw out a word, one word thing. But I really am sincere when I do that. But the more sincerity is when you take the time to put a sentence. And you were doing that. You were giving more of a mentorship than and inspire me that I needed to be better at that. You were going to the next levels to where you were like, hey, this is the company I bought this from and this is my insight. And you were willing to give that freely and you're not selling anything. You're just giving. And you know, I we talk about the giving tree. We talk about that you have to give to get. You were giving, 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 giving. And I thought, she gets it. She knows where we're coming from with this. And if you want to be a part of any group or be a mentor, it's not the get, it's the give. Mm -hmm. And you have that naturally. And so when we had chose to bring you on, it was because of your giving. It was because of your giving tree. It was because of the knowledge that you were giving or you were connecting people naturally saying, you know, I learned this from so-and-so at this and I think they would be a good matchup for you. You were already giving that knowledge. That's a mentor. You are already living that power, but you didn't realize that that's what you were doing. And so being able to, for some reason, you didn't recognize that. We self-sabotage ourselves and you weren't recognizing your strength. And I remember working um, with you multiple times on, in different little workshops and stuff. And you're like, I get it now. And we were at nail camp. You're like, I get it now. You have it. You had it. But for some reason, it just took that self-sabotage part out to be open-minded, saying, I'm going to take in everything. And I'm going to say yes. And you did. And we're so thankful that you said yes. So at some point in time, a couple of weeks ago, and now you've had it in since you've started with our group, uh, I don't know, maybe about two months ago or so, you were like, okay, where's my niche? What do I want to do? What do I, and you were like eager, 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 you know, like, like mm -hmm. you said, the youthful side came out of you. And you're like, what do I want to do that nobody else is doing? And it kind of came back to that, you know, basics of the for beginners, you know, kind of thing or back to basics. And you're like, yes, that's it. I want to do that. And so you've gone live a few times sharing, um, sharing little techniques. You've taught me. I went to Hobby Lobby last week to look for the watercolor markers that you use because I use regular <laughs> charts on mine and they were out. And I was so disappointed because I showed them a picture of what you said. I want this. And they're like, oh, we're out of that right now. But I did go buy the little squeeze things for the alcohol with the brush. Didn't even know they had those. So, Gail, what I'm saying is sometimes you might think of yourself as the beginner and stuff. I've been in the industry a long time. I've seen and I've created a lot of unique things. And here you are still inspiring me. So I hope that you see how many people that you're touching. And the more that you go live, the more followers you get, the, the more that we advertise, you know, you that you're going to be live and the more people that can watch on replay and all of that, you're going to continue to build this. 
So I'm proud of you. Oh, so very you. proud of you for finding a niche and going for it. And I'm excited because Caitlin has the same thing. And what Caitlin's going to do is on a different level too. So I'm so excited yeah. that you guys brought something new to the group and to our industry. And that goes beyond TikTok worldwide because what's going to happen is people believe in you and they're going to say, can you come to my salon and teach this? Can you virtually show up and help teach our our tech our kids our kids our techs this? And um, so I'm excited for where your doors are going to open. But one of the next drives that I know that you have taken is to, to the now you're like, oh my gosh, I think I want to you know become an educator and I want to go to the next step. So somewhere in your mindset you've put back those limiting beliefs that your age is holding you back or something's holding you back and now you're in a new mindset and so um you've you've obviously joined on with light elegance to become an educator and you've got you're in the bachelor's program which is huge and the knowledge is huge and those connections are huge so mm. um so talk to us a little bit about what it's taken for you to get into that well it's all because of you <laughs> um <laughs> okay, so um, you are the originator of the genre technique. And I took your very first online class back in, uh, I think it started either in December of 2017 or January 2018, um, took that class. And I can say without any reservation whatsoever that that changed the nail industry and what I do uh, completely. And I am a huge fan of your diligence and um, your commitment to that technique and your willingness to share uh, the years and years of troubleshooting and working through things and, you know, what products work with other products that, that yeah. inspired me to, I want to do that. I believe in that technique so much that I want to help other techs learn it so it can do for them what it did for me. Oh. Um, and the fact that you got signed on, signed on by a company with the reputation that Light Elegance has just made it more real for me. So when the opportunity came up and they put out a video on um, Facebook and put out a video on YouTube that, that they were looking to grow their family and um, in a lot of different ways, whether it's educators, brand ambassadors, whatever, um, yeah. I wanted to be part of that. And I knew if I were to help prolifer proliferate genre, to the masses that I would have to get my bachelor's degree in light elegance in that you're part of them now. And uh, I didn't hesitate. I signed up immediately and uh, I'm just waiting to uh, do my live with Darcy and get my one minute video. I'm more nervous about that one minute video than I was of this. And that's <laughs> only going to be seen by a group of people where this is worldwide. Um, yeah. But I, I want to make sure that they understand how much I am passionate about what you created. Yeah. Um, that I want to be a part of it and I'm willing to do the steps to get there. I love it. I had no clue that that stemmed from, from you joining and with what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> um, <laughs> so talking about having those doors open and those yeses. Okay. At, at the time that I finally had the confidence to share this on social media, because I'd been teaching genre for a long time and tried to do the patents and couldn't afford it. And, and, and just not that I had a roadblocks, I call them, I had speed bumps and they kept slowing me down because I didn't realize that for international packaging, I would have to do this. And for the patent, I would have to do this. And there was 11 patentable things. And then I had to pay for each patent. And then I was going to have to hire an attorney that if somebody else came out with something like it, sue them. I, that's not my personality. I didn't want to do that. Then I was going to have to become a manufacturer. And I realized I just wanted to teach it. So what was my lex level? And I remember writing down about five years ago, what am I going to do with this? 
I've proven it. I know that this works and I know the techs that I'm using this have become more profitable. I know that their, their time is speed up. I know that they're more confident in their work. Like there was a whole system around it that I had no clue was part of it. I just knew that it was a lot easier. And so then I reached out to chemists. Um, should I be doing this? Cause nobody else is doing this. So should I be doing this? And I realized, yeah, and then that's when my confidence started building up. Then when I shared my very first class online, the feedback that I got, like I said, confidence comes from other people. We have the drive. We have the inner dignity. We know we have the value. I believe in it. Where am I going to get the confidence to know that I'm doing the right thing? Because I can tell you, I had seven nail techs in my salon at the time. Two were against it because there wasn't already a product line out there. If it's not a product line, there's no MSDS sheet to it, then we shouldn't be using it. Okay, it was hard. It was very hard. And um, if you guys are in our Vivify, we, we talk about this bracelet of making decisions. And sometimes you have to allow the sinkers to come in. So we have the idea, we have everything ready to go. We have our team and we're all happy. At some point in time, whether you're a politician or whatever business you're going in, you have the sinkers that see the other side of it and go, well, what about this? Well, what are you gonna do with that? Well, that's not a money maker for a manufacturer company. You only you have a system that only uses two products. That's not going to make a company money. It's going to make a nail tech money. Well, all the more that I would hear that, and I heard it multiple times, the more drive I had saying, you know what, then I'm for the tech. I'm not for the company. I'm for the tech. When that mindset changed in me, I became this little bit of a feisty powerhouse. Like, you know what, then I'm going to share this more and I'm going to be independent on it because the companies are saying that's not a money maker for us. We're going to put out more in packaging that than we are in the profits. And I'm like, okay. So many companies were calling, we were signing, they were signing me up, signing me up. I talked about it like, oh, I was so excited. I signed it, you know, with this one company. And then I'd have the, the meetings with them. And then I'm like, this isn't the right company for me. This is not the vision that I was going for. This is not reformulating something to be perfect for this. This is using what you already have and packaging it different and saying it's this. That's not the vision that I had for this. And so I would back out. Well, that's not always good because I backed out of three different companies because it didn't fit to what mm -hmm. I wanted. And I thought, no, nope, I didn't, I didn't know that. Saying, yeah. And then I went to Nail Camp Utah and Jim McConnell came over. Then I talked to him a little bit more. Then I interviewed him with Tech Talk. And then we talked and talked and talked. And he's like, why aren't, why isn't this a kit? And I was honest with him. For the first time, I was like blunt about it. Like, well, it's not a moneymaker for the distributor. It's not a moneymaker for the manufacturer. This is a moneymaker for the nail tech. It's an easy system for the tech that they can still show st structure. And I went on, like, I remember almost like, like being red, being, you know, like out there like this, like strict. And he's like, I want it. And I thought, you want to be the chemist for it? And then I saw my own product line because I've already said, I'm not a salesperson and I don't want to be the manufacturer. Or you want this less part of your company. It's not a moneymaker. I've learned that. I've been told that over and over and over. And he's like, no, I wanted part of Light Elegance. What? So that started me on the path to where I started listening more. I flew to headquarters, got to know them a little bit more. And my entire career has changed because I realized at this point that even if they didn't put this kit to fruition, even if genre never came to fruition, which it is, it's almost ready. I can't give too many details with that. I still wanted to be a part of this company. And I'd been a part of many other companies in the past. Mm -hmm. But when you find that right tribe and the people that mm -hmm. fit you and where you want to be, I was like you. I feel like I'm this youthful little chick again that is, sees all these possibilities and I'm being believed in. They trust in me. They really want my ideas. Wow, it's it's overwhelming and i'm and i messaged um jim and leslie the other day because my husband's getting ready really for um boot camp he's living a life dream of his because i'm also living my life dream so we have decided at this point in our marriage and this point in our career let's do this let's make this year about what we want to do for us so i have like three irons on the fire right now of things that i've been wanting to accomplish for years like you i've found the right mentors to get me where i want to be so this year you guys are going to see is going to be a powerhouse for amy because 
I found the right family. I found my right structure that I fit into. And even if something doesn't go right and it fails and, and, and I didn't try it, I tried it. My husband's doing the same thing, but I called them and said, my husband's going to be gone for like seven months. I, my daughter's in college. She, li she lives at home and my son's, you know, off on his own because he's older. I'm like, this is my time. But if you want to do anything with me, use me. I want to be used. And oh my gosh, did they go, really? Well, we would like this, 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 this. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, now a little overwhelmed. But Careful you know, what you ask it, for. <laughs> right. And so you're doing the same thing. You're right. saying, okay, this is what I want. Even if it doesn't come to fruition, what I'm learning along the way and the connections that I'm making and knowing that I could even try on a level that was way beyond what I thought I could do. And like what you said, you were kind of ready to retire and get out of it. Now you're feeling the yeses. You're feeling that part that people believe in you. Mm -hmm. feelings that we've maybe never had our entire life and now we're being able to step into our own skin and feel confident in that and and portray that and so I love where you are in your career I didn't mean to go off on all of that but you you guys don't realize that you said I inspired you no 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 by me putting myself out there and being so vulnerable in that first class of not knowing how people are going to take this. And you guys gave me the confidence to be able to say yes to more because I was doing the same thing. I thought, nope, I'm going to get out of this. It's a, it's not a fail. It's just not where I need to be yet. And I'm going to veer on the business side of it. No, no, no. You guys put me on a different path. And it was because of your feedback and it was because of you. So to know that you were inspired by that, that I was so scared to get into. And now you're going to the next level too. It just, it's how we network together. And it's those connections that we make. But unless you reach out and you have written down what you want, you know what you want to do. Those doors will open once you start to verbalize that and say, this is what I want. And it's amazing that you could say that to one person and they say it to one other person. And all of a sudden that person contacts you and say, hey, so-and-so told me that you want to do this. Is that real? Right. And you're like, yeah, those connections are there. You, mm -hmm. just, you just have to verbalize it. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. We've been on for an hour already, Gail, and I'm not even done with you. So do you still have time? Can I use more of your time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyways, you're in the bachelor's program and you're waiting for your last um, finals with mm -hmm. Darcy, which is really exciting. And obviously the next step with the bachelor's is that you have to decide what level do you want to be with light elegance? They're giving you some options. And that's the first time because they've only brought on educators in the past. But because of social media, it has changed. Some people are very good behind the camera and they can teach. Some people are very good at sales and they can sell anything and they can do pop up lives and sell. Like I bought these earrings because of a pop up live, you know, on Facebook. And me too. I know, see? <laughs> and so some people are really good in different aspects and they own that. And mm -hmm. so um, what, because I haven't really asked you, I know that you want to educate and you want to specialize in the genre part of it, which is a possibility. Like this is really happening. And so, but if that doesn't happen, where, what's your backup plan and what do you want to do next? Um, my backup plan, like if it doesn't work out with light elegance in general or no, oh, so let's say, um, okay, so if you're going to be on the education team, you have to travel a lot, mm -hmm. a whole lot, which I also know that you take care of your grandson. So with mm -hmm. that, it might limit a little bit of the travels, but you are just starting to be like doing the online portion of it. And that might be your strength of what you can do and do it successfully. Um, or you want to be part of the sales part. Do you want to be an influencer? Or do you want to be innovative and, and give them a whole new idea saying, you know what, nobody else is doing this because that's what I like about Light Elegance is that they listen to your ideas and go, we like that. Let's fine tune that. Let's get you in touch with Joseph and let's let's work on that media. And it's like, oh my gosh, because they listen. So where do you want to be? What's what you, What does your future with being an educator, whether it's with Light Elegance or another company or however you want to do it, what does that look like to you? Um, you know, if, if not being able to be part of the team to help um, launch genre, to teach genre, to talk about it, I am well versed, and you can ask my husband. I'm online a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
And I find that once, if I have the, the right setup for my camera, if you could, if you could have seen how I jury rigged my, <laughs> uh, my setup here in my salon, you'd go, well, that's pretty innovative, but I couldn't get my phone to focus in and where it needed to be. But if I had, you know, the right equipment, I would go on, I do lives all the time. I would show products oh, yeah. all the time. I love doing that. I love playing because um, I have the time to do that. I'm, I'm a part-time nail tech uh, because, it, and it's a weird thing, because I'm in my home, I don't put myself out there as much as maybe I could because it's my home. I, I'm a little uneasy about strangers coming into my house. So I'm trying to do the word of mouth thing and the referrals from other people. Um, so there are days that I don't have a lot to do. Yeah. And that's when I decided after taking that seven day, um, jumpstart your business that I'm going to come down in my salon and I'm going to put four hours in as if I'm at a, a working, yeah. uh, payable job yeah. and I'm going to play, I'm going to look at all the, and oh my gosh, I have enough supplies here to open up a store. <laughs> um, I might as well learn how to use them and manipulate them and create something with them that looks like I've got talent. Um, I, you know, when I, when I look at nail magazine and, and some of the other publications or go on Pinterest or Instagram, I mean, the, the nail art is just phenomenal. I mean, mm -hmm. there are those that I follow consistently just because, I can't believe somebody created them. Um, I can't do that. I don't have that skill to be able to do that. I can draw a little bit, but I can't do portraits on a nail. I, whatever. That's not me. Um, but I've got enough product here where I can try things out. Does this work with this? Um, mm -hmm. What about this color and this color? And play. And out yeah. of playing... I created some, what I thought were really, really interesting nails. Yeah. Um, would I do a, a full set of 10 on somebody? No, but like an accent nail. Uh, so I know it can be done. And I know I'm not the only person out there that doesn't have um, the, the artistic skill that so many nail techs have. Um, yeah. And there's got to be something for us to do other than, you know, paint your, uh, um, what's that nail called? Accent nail. nail. <laughs> what that that accent nail a different color to make it look like? Wow, that's a really pretty set of nails. Yeah. We'll be able to do something different where people will go, "Oh my gosh, you did that!" Yeah. Um, so that that's what I'm doing. So having decided a month ago to do that has certainly got my creative juices flowing. And my husband will oftentimes, I'll come out of my office or out of the salon and he'll go, I didn't know you were in there. And I'd been in here for four hours, you know. Um, yeah. I just put my music on and I just sit here quietly. And if my grandson isn't here, it's even better. Um, and I just play and I just play and I make a mess and, yeah. and then I clean it up and I go to bed going, yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed doing that. I love it. Well, one of the things that I want to remind you in the very beginning, you were talking about the portraits. Okay. So you have to remember how many clients are going to come in and want a portrait on a nail. That's very rare, right? That's a, that's a very, very small specialty and you need to go to an expert to get that done. What I learned in my career early on when I was educating is that there's two types of educators. Well, actually, I've learned that there's three because I'm falling slowly into the third set. Um, there is the educator for competition nails. OK, mm -hmm. when you do a portrait, you're in a competition to maybe Nails Magazine um, when you're when they're doing their uh, forget like face off challenge or they're doing these competitions that falls under competition, not so much salon nails. Mm -hmm. What I realize is I'm not a competition tech and I'm not a competition educator. I'm a salon tech. And what you're going to realize is that you don't have to compete with that. 
That's mm -hmm. that maybe it's not your specialty. Doesn't mean you'll try it. I mean, you guys saw that I did Albert Einstein um, like two years ago. I got an honorable mention. That was my very first time even trying ever. To it paint. was phenomenal. It was gorgeous. I loved it, but it put me way out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But that is competition nails. Okay, that is not so much a salon nail. Not to say that somebody might not come in and say, well, you paint my cat on my nails, but they're going to find the right artist to do that right. and the right person. So what you are teaching and what you're going to narrow your field to is that's not your competition. You're a salon tech showing salon nails. Right. We need right. that. Mm -hmm. More people are going to relate to that. And if they want a competition uh, type of training, they're going to find a competition educator right. or a competition mentor. And so when I learned that I didn't have to know all of that, that I could just specialize in this. Amy, where are you? And so that made the big difference for me of, of that. The next level that I'm learning into of it is the business side of it and until we started doing some of the extra um, workshops that we've done or I do pop-up live it was amazing that the people that were asking me questions weren't about technique it was about commission versus booth rent it was about where do you get confidence for this it was like um where what do I do for insurance and I was like wait a minute these weren't questions I was prepared for I knew the answers though so I was like Oh, guess where I'm steering 2020 for? And, and actually, by the end of this year, we've already started that. I'm going to start steering on the tech of learning the business to be successful. They have the techniques and they have the resources to go for the competition side, the salon, nail art, whatever. But they're not getting the know-how of running their business. But and you know, that's that, where that, my focus is now. That is so true in, in many different um, vocations. I... Uh, when I got out of the beauty industry, I went into the medical field and I was an office manager for a vascular surgeon for 23 years. Wow. He was a phenomenal surgeon. Phenomenal. Didn't have the great greatest bedside manner, but if you were in a situation that you needed his expertise, you wanted him. He knew nothing about business. He knew nothing about how to handle a... Um, an office full of staff. He micromanaged everybody to death, including me. And I was his office manager. Um, so that is something that, yeah, absolutely. They should be teaching that in school. Um, but they don't even teach like home economics or uh, basic bookkeeping in high school anymore. And kids are coming out of school, not knowing how to balance a check. Everything is, you know, throw it on a credit card. And well, if there's money at the end of the month, I'll pay it. Um, yeah. So that kind of that kind of uh, knowledge is huge, you know, if you yeah. want to be successful, you it's know, so don't don't spend more than you make. I mean, that is a basic concept that um, yeah. is hard when everything that we need as nail techs is so sparkly and it calls out to us. Yeah. To <laughs> yeah. When I had started keeping profits in your pockets, which was one of the first workshops that I put out besides nail art, it was one of the biggest eye openers because people are like, I had no clue. I had no clue what to turn in for the taxes. I had no clue what to, you know, I could write off and not write off. I had no clue how to figure out my overhead and my wage. And mm -hmm. when we go into detail, they don't like it. They, I, I say it's intense and I can say that the first week of it, people don't like it because there's a lot of work into it. But boy, after they get through that week and they start realizing the rest of the story and how to grow from that, every single one of them, I've still continued to check in on and say, how's your year end? And they're like, oh my gosh. And then there's posts that, you know, people will post because of this, I'm profitable this year. And I, I, that's the one that gets me because I realize that we can learn all the techniques. I remember Ella Washkett had one all of these competitions she's known as the 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 nail tech of the year year after year after year after year she wrote a book about shapes and structure she was teaching online stuff could not build up a clientele couldn't and and she was low end low end pricing and could not build up a clientele she said because i didn't know how to run a business mm -hmm. i knew the nails couldn't run the business didn't know how to market it 
And it was like, oh my goodness, like here you would think the people that have the skills and they have the knowledge and they know can, they can create any nail, you would think their business would build up like that. That's not always the case. Right. So anyways, yeah, learning the differences and all of that kind of stuff has been amazing. Um, so I'm going to go through really quickly. Um, so I want to um, spotlight. So I had met Brenda LaBeouf years ago and Brenda's watching and she says, hi, ladies, hey, I'm here. Brenda. Hi, Gail and Amy. So speaking of mentorship and the way that social media works, you and Brenda met online and decided that you were going to meet. And now you guys meet regularly to be able to do these play dates. And I love that. And I'd kind of forgotten that till I just saw Brenda's name. So, you know, that's kind of hard sometimes. It's like I talk about like online dating when you very first meet, but somebody you don't really know in person, are they really who they are? And you take that chance. So, you know, when you guys went to the first level to meet each other, how did that go? And and it's continued on. Um, I, I think Brenda can attest to that. It was like we always knew each other. Yeah. You know, well, um, Brenda lives up in Maine. Um, she, uh, again, I found her uh, in that same feed when uh, Becky had put out, where is everybody from? Uh, do you want to be a mentor or a mentee? And I saw Brenda in Maine, Sanford, Maine. I'm like, oh, I used to live in Maine. So I, I texted her and, and we chatted a little bit and we decided you know, let's meet. And I think that was back in the summer. It wasn't until October of last year that we were finally able to get together because she worked full time and, you know, she's got, uh, you know, uh, younger kids at home. I mean, they're in high school, but um, she's got younger kids at home. And um, uh, we finally made it meet and she was working in a salon and I went to her salon and we hugged as if we knew each other forever. Yeah. We, we uh, exchanged services. She gave me a pedicure. I gave her a pedicure. We went out to lunch and tried to brainstorm, you know, uh, stuff that we could do. We said we were going to conquer the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Somehow, some way, we were going to conquer the East Coast. Um, but I've gone up there a few times, and uh, we're trying to get her to come to nail camp julia and i are trying to come mm -hmm. to get her to come to nail camp in uh in april now she just opened up a brand new salon in her home yeah. and um now this is interesting and I, i'm not going to take credit for this because it's all god but in january of this past year i decided that i was going to find a person and pray for them every day for a month so uh, Brenda and I just happened to be talking and she said she really wanted to do this. And I said, well, you know what? You're my person. I'm going to pray for every day for a month. And I did. And, you know, God is good. It, uh, what we prayed for came to fruition. So, um, you know, it does work and I'm really excited for her. She's, she's just yes. a sweetie. She's a sweetheart. Yes. And like you, I've continued to stay in communication with her for the last three years or so, you know, every now and then checking in and she'll check in on me. And I love the true, true heartfelt friendships that yes. we get. And, you know, like Anita and I talked for a year, almost every single day online. And then we finally got to meet each other in Philadelphia. And once again, it's that same thing. You just feel like you're just these old souls that you've known each other your whole life, but you haven't. And so you don't know though, till you reach out. And so again, right. look at you reaching out to more, even more, even more. And, and I can only imagine now that you get more confidence and you get more following behind you, how many more people are going to reach out to you. And now it's your time for, to, you know, kind of shine. And I'm so proud of you. And I, oh, and I appreciate you. that you said yes of joining our admin team. I love being able to spotlight you today and tech talk live and, and let people know that, you know, you're on, you're just, a salon tech like the rest of us you know we're all on those same platforms we're real and we're here and we want to help and um you're inspiring so many and like i said you inspire me so i just want to say thank you for that thank you so much i look forward to seeing what happens with your future
of course I want you to, you know, join on with Light Elegance, be able to travel around with me because, you know, that would be so much fun. Yes. But, you know, we'll see where it goes because, you know, I don't, I'm not in control of those decisions. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is support you and be your biggest cheerleader. Oh, thank and you. So the best. I just want to say thank you, Gail, for, you know, honestly, it's because you put yourself out there in comments and showing other people and helping that um, we chose for you to be here. And I know that other people are going to choose you for you being you. I know that you're going to continue on in this. And despite our ages <laughs> and our self-sabotage, <laughs> it's still there. And there's a part of us that people can see us shine and they believe in us for that. And I believe in you and I appreciate you. Thank so you, thank, thank you. you so much. And thanks for sharing your story. Oh, and um, yeah, and thanks for everybody for joining on. So um, I know there wasn't a lot of questions or anything on there, but obviously on replay, if you're watching this, please, um, you know, if you have questions for Gail or, or I, you're more than welcome to, you know, ask any questions and we're here for you. You can private message us or tag our name in the comments because if not, it won't send it to us. Um, but we'll keep an eye on this for the next few days and, and see how it goes. But anyways, thank you guys so much for supporting Tech Talk Live. Thank you for supporting us in Tech Talk Worldwide and helping us grow. I know Gail is looking for inspiration. And so she's like, what should I do in my videos? What do people want to learn that maybe I can teach? So I encourage you to bombard Gail with your ideas and see if they fit with her. Or is it something that we can push her out of her box a little bit and help her grow as well to not only learn the technique, but to teach you as well? Because I know that's what you guys did to me. You guys were like, well, you show me how to do this. And I had to try to perfect it. I love that challenge because it helps me grow, too. So please challenge us. Give us that. And then in return, like for the holidays, we have a challenge for you. We have coming up. So um, I know that will be posted. But one thing, Gail, that you mentioned twice in our live today is that a post that Becky had done about mentoring and teaming up that proves to me that that post either needs to be reboosted yes. or we need to yes. create another one. It's time. If that's what got you to where you are today is from one post uh, that needs to be redone. And yeah. so um, somehow us admin will talk about um, getting somehow that rebumped up or whatever. So please take advantage of, because there's many people I remember on that post, um, like Carrie and Lori and all of these other um, women that we didn't even think about wanted to be mentors because you don't see them online all the time. They definitely wanted to. They were very active in those comments. And so mm -hmm. uh, they're amazing people to look up to. And who I'm talking about is Lori Anastos and Carrie Lusheshi. Both of them were very much saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. And Andrea um, uh, uh, Doyle, there's so and Anita Hug. There's so many and of Dana us. Dana Lynn like Stockwood, out of, uh, she's another yeah, Massachusetts yeah. girl. Yeah, and so please reach out. That's what we're here for. And obviously, that's how Gail's gotten to where she is. Is she reached out at some point in time and said, "I, I, I want to do this. It's on my bucket list, or it's on my to do list for this month, or, or whatever it takes. Do it." This is, and it's the year end, you know, it's towards the year end where we realize that we had all these goals and we didn't do it. Like I'm in that right now. Like I just advertised a little sneak peek of what I've been wanting to do for two years. This year I said it was going to be my goal to the end of the year and I'm just now getting to it. So those of us that are procrastinators, this is the end of the year. <laughs> Reach out and get done before the end of the year or even get your foot into the door of where you want to be and work on it and focus on that and put it at the top of your notebook page that we talk about. Get it done. As, as Becky says, follow your arrow. Where is it pointing? Is it right. going all over the place? Or do you say, you know what? This is what I'm going to focus on this week, this month, this year. Just do it mm -hmm. and get the perfect example of that. And, and sometimes it even has to start at find your arrow. Yeah. You, have, you may not even have an arrow yet. Find your arrow and decide where it goes. Yes. And so those of you that don't know that we're talking about with Jumpstart, it was a free uh, seven-day uh Jumpstart your nail business. We didn't know where it was going to go to when Becky and I started it, but it definitely covers the motivation, finding your arrow. What do you want to specialize in? What do you want to expert in? What do you want your wage to be? And we go into detail on that. It's still up and available till December 1st. Um, you can watch all the videos on replay. All you have to do is uh, find the Facebook group, Jumpstart Your Nail Business, and answer the question if you're a licensed tech. Uh, give us your email address, and you're in. That's it. 
and you can watch the videos and still ask us questions and stuff like that. From there, it inspired us to do, it's called Refresher Why, because we realized so many of the people that were in there were like, I don't know where to start. I don't, I don't know if I want to do this. And you got in this for a reason. Mm -hmm. So what was your why? And then we um, shared some archived videos of what we did to refresh our why. And that's a $29. Um, you're in there for as long as you need. Then we went big time. That's intense. It's a, we call it boot camp. And it's 21 day boot camp. And we've been working. We're on day 15 today um, of digging deeper. And getting you, you know where your arrow is, and now where? What are you going to do with it? And we are um, tough loving it, <laughs> as I want to say. Yep. We're just saying it the way that it is, and we're holding you accountable to it. And so that one was a little bit more spending. It's two ninety seven, but you can still join that as well. Those that ends oh next week, I think is the last time that you can sign up for that. We will repeat it again sometime in the spring. But it will be a little while before we have the time to be able to dedicate to that again, because as you guys want all holidays and everything kick in. So um, there's still time to join in all of that. And some of them are free. Some are 29. Some is a little bit more of investment, but it depends on what you want to. Where's your arrow? Like you said, have you found it? <laughs> I like that. All right. Well, Gail, again, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining. I appreciate all the love that you've given to us through Tech Talk Live and Tech Talk Worldwide. And I look forward to watching more of Gail's lives and learning more from her as well. So thank you so much, Gail, for your time. Oh, my, thank you my pleasure. for being a yes girl. Thank you. And I look forward to uh, celebrating more of your accomplishments as as the time comes to uh, to do that. So thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good day, guys. All right. See ya.